Welcome to the EPG Patashala lecture series by UGC. This is the um, uh, subject computer science and we are going to talk about the paper machine learning and in this module we are going to talk about an important aspect of machine learning clustering. And clustering is an unsupervised technique very very important when we do not have data that is readily tagged and available to us for supervised learning. These are the people responsible for the development of this module and for the creation of this module. Now let us look at the learning objectives of this particular module. The learning objectives of this module are to understand clustering and its applications and then to look at hierarchical clustering that is one type of clustering. In this module we will be looking at one type of clustering. The next module we will be seeing another important uh, methodology of clustering called k-means clustering. And then we are going to understand agglomerative clustering with an illustrative example, agglomerative or hierarchical clustering uh, which we are going to understand with an illustrative example. So, the keywords are clustering, hierarchical clustering and agglomerative clustering. Okay. So, first before we go forward let us uh, understand what is clustering. Okay. So, let us first understand what is clustering. So, clustering is the most important unsupervised learning problem. It is so uh, important and so popular that uh, clustering and unsupervised learning have been used synonymously, but actually it is not. Uh, clustering is one type and very important type of uh, unsupervised learning problem. It is a method of data exploration that is what we are trying to do is we are trying to look for patterns or structure in the data that are of interest in a collection of unlabeled data. Now, please remember here the important part is that what we are having is a collection of unlabeled data. Unlabeled means class is not labeled or uh, with the data. It is only just the data and then we are looking for patterns or structure in that data. We do not know what will come, but we are looking for such patterns or structure in the data. So, basically as I already told you what we have to stress here is that no class values denoting a priori beforehand the grouping of the data instances are given. So, that is uh, the difference between unsupervised learning and supervised learning. In supervised learning data instances along with the class labels or values will be given, but in unsupervised the a priori grouping is not done the data instances are just given and after that we try to find a pattern or a structure in that. So, a loose definition of clustering could be the process of organizing objects or data points into groups whose members are similar in some way. So, that is a loose uh, definition of clustering. From this you must understand when we say members are similar in some way. Now, depending upon the features that you are going to use the clustering groups can be different. For example, you just take a class of students. When you take a class of students you want to cluster them. Okay, uh, We have not given any label. So, one of the clustering could be based on which uh, place they come from. So, if you group them according to place you will form a separate cluster. If you want to look at uh, uh, what are their uh, specializations or something like that or areas of interest the group will be completely different. Okay, So, the group is depend upon the similarity we are looking for and the similarity in turn is based on the feature that is uh, we are basing the clustering on. A cluster is therefore collection of objects which are similar between them and dissimilar to the objects or data instances that occur in some other clusters. So, that is the uh, clustering definition. So, as we already told you uh, grouping or clustering is subjective like in the last example I, I told you a group of students can be uh, clustered or grouped according to uh, the place from which they come, the uh, in their areas of interest, their marks and so on or the starting uh, alphabet of their name it could be anything. So, you can group depending upon what feature you want to group it on therefore, clustering is subjective. So, let us look at an example this is a set of people that we have and uh, we want to group them. One way of grouping them is all these four people that we see here are all employees of a school. So, that is one grouping. Another grouping is they all of four of these people they are all from the same group they all belong to Ram's family okay. or you could group them according to their sex like these are females and these are males. So, there are different groupings possible this is a natural grouping. So, clustering is subjective. Now, let us again talk a little more in detail about clustering. Given a set of points with a notion of distance between the points group the points into some number of clusters. So, that members of a cluster are close to each other and members of different clusters are far away from each other. So, now what are we talking here we are talking about a concept of or a notion of distance between data points. The distance is based on the similarity. Uh, so, the more distant they are the less similar they are. So, uh, you are going to group these points into clusters members of a cluster are 
close or similar, close if its distance are similar to each other and they are if they belong to different clusters they are dissimilar or they are far away from each other. Now, let us take an example here you have data points you have a green, uh, blue and yellow clusters ok they are just uh, numbering and uh, e the points that come together is forming a cluster and you can see there are some points which we call as outlier I will come to the what is an outlier. So, a data set here has 3 natural uh, groups of uh, data points and here in this example we have 3 clusters. Now, we have an outlier, an outlier is an observation of the data or a data point that deviates from all other observations that means it cannot fit into any of the clusters then it is called an outlier. Now, you may be wondering suddenly why we are talking about outlier, outlier is a one very important concept of machine learning used very, very often in medical uh, applications where we want to find something that is dissimilar from others. So, uh, that would uh, be an indication of a disease for example. So, this is specifically outlier detection came into the picture in medical uh, data and now it is being used in anomaly detection and such type of application. So, outlier is also very important ok. Now, one more point that uh, we have to discuss here is when we talk about cluster the depend how the clusters are formed dip depends upon a threshold a distance threshold you put. So, the higher the threshold if you put high threshold then that means that uh, they cannot be clustered together that means the number of clusters will be less. If you lower the threshold the number of clusters will be more. So, the threshold also the distance threshold also depends on the how the clustering is performed. Now, let us look at some applications of clustering before we go forward. So, understanding uh, for understanding purposes. So, you group related documents for browsing, group genes for and proteins for that have similar functionality or group stocks with similar price fluctuation. So, these are uh, to understand the whole process. So, either related documents or a group genes depending upon the functionalities and so on. So, uh, for example, in a news application you can sort of if you have a news uh, website you can uh, group all the similar uh, topics uh, articles in one place and that will be useful for the understanding by the uh, user. So, Google news automatic clustering gives an effective news presentation metaphor for the Google news to use. Another uh, important application of clustering from the you know abstract viewpoint a more viewpoint is summarization that is reduce the size of large data sets this that means you cluster uh, uh, data points together and then use a representative of that uh, cluster them and that cluster representation can be used to summarize what those data points look like. So, for example, here you have clustered and this is the clustering precipitation in Australia. So, these are different points where it is clustered. So, you, you get a summary of how precipitation is there in Australia. So, this is uh, for summarization. So, two basic applications of clustering are in understanding and in now again what is clustering for let us see some real world earlier life examples. So, example 1 we are taking groups of people of similar sizes together to make small medium and large t shirts. So, you can group people together and find out what is the um, size of small and what is the size of medium by getting a profile. This is a very important application in uh, application because each country the size of the t shirts will be different for uh, the people. So, you have to take the people group them together find their uh, normal sizes and medium sizes and uh, then design the t shirts this is a very good uh, commercial application. So, tailor made for each person is too expensive. So, one size fits all also does not make sense. So, you have this type of clustering. The example 2 is this is an important application in today's social uh, network scenario uh, social media analytics in marketing you segment customers according to their similarities. Why should you do this because if you want to target advertising and all that you can uh, sort of uh, target this group of uh, customers. So, that it is personalized in a way to them ok that is to do targeted marketing. So, another application that we are going to look at is given a collection of text documents we want to organize them according to their content similarities. So, to produce a topic hierarchy may be that is an important part or as we already saw even in that understanding example Google news uses it for um, um, clustering documents to present it in a different way. In fact, uh, uh, clustering is one of the most utilized data mining technique ok it came into the picture much before uh, machine learning basically became very popular. It was used basically in data mining, it is used in big data analytics, it is used in a number and number of applications today. It has a long history and is used in almost every field for example, medicine, psychology, botany, sociology, biology, archaeology, marketing, insurance, 
libraries today in almost every business because we are talking about big data analytics. In recent years to the, as I already told you another major thing that is coming today major aspect that is coming in clustering today is text clustering because of the rapid increase of online documents text clustering is used for news presentation text clustering is uh, present even when you want to push uh, certain uh, type of uh, news articles or uh, documents to certain type of people even when uh, you know you, you wish to send uh, specific online brochures to people all this clustering becomes a very important tool ok. So, now let us look at certain aspects of clustering ok. So, first it deals with high dimensional data now we have never spoken about high dimensional data before in this aspect of clustering. What is high dimensional data? It means that a data point has more than one feature the simplest example of high dimensional data is documents because what are the uh, dimensions of the document the number of terms. So, the overall dimension will be then suppose I have 10,000 documents ok. Then the overall dimension of that particular corpus will be the number of unique words across all the documents. But when you represent one document it will be a column vector and that column vector will have only certain entries ok. So, it deals with high dimensional data and with that you are going to do the clustering. So, another important aspect is the distance function or similarity dissimilarity function. So, clustering algorithms include hierarchical clustering and partitional clustering they are the basic two methods or uh, divisions or aspects of uh, clustering algorithms and we will see specific cases of hierarchical clustering and partitional clustering. So, clustering quality is also very important. So, inter cluster distance has to be maximized and intra cluster distance has to be minimized that is within a cluster the distance should be between the points should be minimum between clusters the distance should be the maximum. So, that is shown in that figure there. And uh, the quality of clustering results depends on everything it depends on the algorithm you use it depends on the distance function you are measuring and it depends on the application. In fact, the distance uh, uh, function in turn depends on the representation how many features you are using and how you are representing the um, data point. So, that is also important. Now, this is an example of high dimensional data you can be given a cloud of data points and we want to understand the structure of the data points or clustering is generally a very hard problem when we talk about high dimensional data. Now, let us look at similarity measures as we already told you dis distance function or similarity measures they are inverse of each other the more distant they are the, um, the most um, the more dissimilar they are ok. But we can use it interchangeably as long as you understand that basic difference between the two. So, clustering is grouping together similar data but what does this mean what do you mean by grouping together similar data that is the question we want to answer. Choosing similarity measures is a critical step in clustering if you do not choose a good similarity measure you will not get a good clustering. So, similarity measure is often defined as the inverse of the distance function as I already told you. There are numerous distance functions for different types of data for example, you could have numeric data you could have nominal, uh, nominal data you, you could also design distance function for different specific applications ok. So, now let us look at distance functions for numerical attributes we denote distance with distance between x i and x j where x i and x j are data points remember data points means they could be vectors they need not be just one point in space it could be a vector ok. Uh, and uh, most commonly used functions are Euclidean distance and Manhattan or city block distance Euclidean distance is the distance between any two data uh, points in space geometric uh, distance between any two points in space which we have stu studied in our school. Manhattan city block distance is slightly different we will come into that. So, they are all special cases of Minkowski distance where h is a positive integer we will discuss those as we go along. So, the first uh, what we see here is the distance x i x j is measured as the every point. So, i, I and j are represented by n, uh, many dimensions and depending upon so you will find x i j x i 1 minus x j 1 x i 2 minus x j 2 to the power of h. So, we are leaving h as it is we have not defined h that is called means Wosky distance and we take the square root of that h ok. So, now simple case is the Euclidean distance in Euclidean distance is h is e equal to 2. So, uh, distance of x i minus x j is square root of because we have uh, put h is equal to 2 x i 1 minus x j the whole square plus x i uh, 2 minus x j 2 the whole square up to how many ever is your uh, dimension. So, dimension is 1 and h is 1 2 parameters. 
if h is equal to 1 then it is called as Manhattan distance or city block distance. So, then it will be distance of x i x j is equal to x i 1 minus x j uh, 1 plus x i uh, 2 minus x j 2 and so on. So, that is Manhattan distance. So, we have seen Manhattan distance and Euclidean distance they are all special cases of Minkowski's uh, distance which is defined in terms of a h. Uh, we also have weighted Euclidean distance where uh, each of these uh, the it is the same as Euclidean distance, but each of the dimensions is weighted. Now, this is very important uh, if you just look at it as a geometric problem you would not understand the uh, importance, but certain features each dimension represents a feature. So, certain features you want to give it more importance then that is where you will do the weight and that is called weighted Euclidean distance. So, these are the basic distances we saw Euclidean distance, Manhattan distance and weighted Euclidean distance these are for numeric attributes. So, each of the values in that is a numerical value. Then we will see diff, uh, for binary attributes, for binary attributes we will use a concept of a confusion matrix. This confusion matrix is used in a number of places in different uh, contexts, but here we will talk as a confusion matrix as uh, suppose you have a data point i and a data point j, they can be vectors here we are just taking simple example and uh, what we do is uh, we can have that. Uh, a, B, C and D as the 4 entries in the data points and so you have A plus B, C plus D, A plus C and B plus D. So, um, I mean I I is A plus B alone and so on. So, you, you are actually finding out the similarity if they have the same value or not binary remember. So, if I and J are both 0 then you have A, 0 and 1 B and so on. So, number of attributes the value of 1 for both data points the number of attribute that is A B is the number of attributes for which B is uh, I mean I is equal to 0 and J is equal to 1 and uh, psi is equal to 0 and J is equal to 1 and so on. So, this is the way it is defined. So, uh, so again just to repeat uh, both are 0 uh, you have A, um, I is 0 J is 1 B, uh, I is 1 uh, J is 0 uh, C both are 1 you have D. So, number of attributes the value of 0 for both points ok. So, asymmetric binary attributes you have certain attributes called Jacquard coefficient and similarity function for text documents as cosine similarity. So, cosine similarity and Jacquard uh, coefficient we will discuss later on when we talk about applications ok. Now, let us look at the methods of clustering. Now, what are the different methods of clustering? So, we are going to look at uh, two methods basically, but in this module we will be discussing in detail the hierarchical measure. So, uh, it is called agglomerative it is a bottom up technique and initially what we consider here is that each point is in by itself a cluster that is what we start off with and you repeatedly combine two nearest clusters into one. So, suppose I have A, B, C, D and I find A and D are very similar I combine A and D and that is considered now as a point now I have three A, D, B and C now I try to combine this is the way the agglomerative uh, works. So, other method of hierarchical is top down you assume that everything you uh, all the data points uh, together from one cluster and you recursively split it. So, that is the uh, next method of doing. So, here you will in the first method you look at similarity in the second method you look at dissimilarity. So, this is a uh, example of agglomerative and divisive both you will start from top and go down or the other one you will top uh, start from bottom and go up. Now, the next type of uh, clustering is a point assignment here you maintain a set of clusters and points uh, you try to find points that belong to the nearest cluster. So, for example, this is an example so you start with a cluster see whether this point belongs to which cluster and put it together. So, you do not join clusters that is not what we do here this is called as point assignment it is also called as partitional clustering. Now, let us look at hierarchical clustering. So, a typical clustering analysis via partitioning data set sequentially this is a typical method and you construct nested partitions layer by layer via grouping objects into tree of clusters without the need to know the number of clusters you do not know the number of clusters you keep on um, combining combining until you can no more combine and so it uses a distance matrix as a clustering criteria ok. So, let us look at hierarchical clustering hierarchical clustering method works by grouping object into a tree of clusters as we already discussed. Hierarchical clustering methods can be further classified as we already told you into agglomerative, uh, agglomerative and divisive. In agglomerative we start with individual and go up, in divisive we start with one cluster and go down splitting it, one you merge and one you split. 
So, T these are both sequential clustering strategy for clustering tree of clusters. So, agglomerative is as I already told you a bottom up strategy and where each data point is specified or object is specified as a single cluster and then you merge. The other one you every all the data points one cluster and then you divide. Okay. Now, let us take agglomerative hierarchical clustering as you remember it is a bottom up and it merges and uh, finally, uh, all the objects are in a single cluster when you finish the algorithm that is what we are telling here new. Most hierarchical clustering methods follow agglomerative it does not do the divisive method. So, they normally follow the bottom up method. So, let us take an illustrative example to explain this in detail. So, let us assume that you have a data set consisting of A, B, C, D, E and uh, so this is a typical example of agglomerative you have A, B, C, D, E in the first step in agglomerative A and B are combined together. So, now you will you will take A, B, C, D and E uh, D and E and in the next step D and E are combined. Now, you have A, B, C and D in, in those three C, D, E is combined. So, now you have A, B and C, D after that A, B, C, D is combined. If you go in the other direction divisive you will start with A, B, C, D you split it up into C, D, E and A, B then you split up C, D, E into D and then D into D and E. So, this is the method of divisive. So, cluster distance and termination condition are what is important here. So, in hierarchical clustering you have different methods of how do you find the distance between two clusters that is you want to find the distance between the closest points which is uh, used for neighbor joining that is what we are doing we are joining two points. So, one is single link single link means between uh, the distance between uh, two clusters is the distance between the closest points. So, you have one cluster another cluster you find which is the closest point uh, I mean uh, point in cluster A and the closest point in cluster B. So, that A and B you find. So, this is the distance between the closest point this is called single link for merging purposes you are using this technique. The next method is what is called as average link. In average link you do not take the closest points you just find the distance between the centroids of the two clusters. So, you find the average and find the centroid of cluster 1 and the centroid of cluster 2 and you find the distance between the two this is called as average link. And the third method is called as complete link. In complete link you find the distance between the furthest pair of uh, points between the two clusters. So, the three methods are single link closest points, average link between the two cluster uh, centroids and uh, complete link between the two furthest points. Okay. So, uh, this is explained here as you can see single link is the minimum distance, complete link is the maximum distance and average link is the average distance. So, link single link you can say is between the two clusters C and C j is the minimum of the distance between x i p and x, x j q okay, that is those two points. Complete link maximum of the distance and average link is the average of the distance you take all the distance and calculate the average. So, these are the distance measures and given a da uh, data set of 5 objects characterized by a single feature we are assuming there are two clusters A, B and C, D. Let us assume C 1 is one cluster and C, D is another cluster. So, you have to calculate the distance matrix you calculate three distances uh, cluster distances between C 1 and C 2 that is A and uh, to C, uh, B to C and so on like that. So, this is the would be A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D you would calculate the distance single link the distance between C 1 and C 2 will be the minimum of the distance between uh, a and C, A and D and A and E, B and C, B and D and B and E and you will get the values as 3, 4, 5, 2, 3, 4 and minimum is 2. So, that is the distance between C 1 and C 2. Complete link similar way maximum of that. So, you will get it as 5. In average the same thing you will have to take the average of all the 6 points and you will get it as 3.5. So, depending on this the distance varies. So, how you define the distance. So, this is an example to show you the different cluster uh, distance measures. Now, let us look at the algorithm the hierarchical clustering takes as input a set of uh, points it creates a tree in which points are leaves and the internal nodes reveal the similarity structure of the points the tree is often called as a uh, dendrogram. So, the method is summarized below place all points into their own clusters while there are more than one cluster you keep merging the closest pair of clusters together. The behavior of the algorithm depends on how you define the closest pair as we already told you three simple methods are there 
single link, complete link and uh, average link. Now, the agglomerative algorithm is carried out in three steps. These are the steps. You start with the objects, convert object attributes into a similarity matrix a little more technically and then set each point as a cluster. Thus, if you have n objects, we will start with n clusters in the beginning and then repeat until the number of clusters is 1 or you have a known number of clusters. You need not reach the 1. So, merge 2 cluster points and then update the distance. How will you update the distance? Because now 2 points have joined together. So, the distance matrix updates. We will see this with an example. So, let us take an example. It is a single link clustering in Euclidean space on 6 points. So, I have A, B, C, D, uh, E, F. Now, A and B are combined, it looks near. So, we are not and E and F combined and then A, B and C combine and then A, B, C and D combine and then A, B, C, D and E, F combine to give you the complete dendral tree. Okay. So, this is the dendrogram representation. In the beginning, we have 6 clusters. We merge the clusters D, F, D and F to form a cl cluster with the distance as 0.5. The values are given there. We merge clusters A and B and that gives a value of 1. Then we merge T, E D F and E to give a value of 1.41 and so on. So, this is a uh, method of representation. So, let us take an example again repeat the key operation is repeatedly combining two nearest clusters. So, there are three important questions you have to answer here. How do you represent a cluster of more than one point? How do you determine the nearness of clusters and when to stop combining clusters? These are three important points you have to answer. How do you represent a cluster of more than one point? How do you determine the Rareness of clusters, how do you define it and when to combine or when to stop combining. So, uh, repeatedly combine how to represent key problem as you merge uh, clusters, how to represent the location of each clusters to tell which pair of clusters is the closest. So, this is the one problem. So, one method is each cluster you can have a centroid average of its data points and that can be used to represent the cluster. How to determine the nearness of the cluster? You can, uh, you can use any of the uh, distances cluster distances or here the best is distance of centroids. Now, what about non Euclidean case? There we assume uh, Euclidean case. In that case, the only location we can talk about are the points themselves. There is no average concept at all when you talk about non Euclidean case. So, the approach one is how to represent a cluster of many points. It is called as clusteroid or a, uh, a, a point that is closest to other points that is considered as a clusteroid. And how do you determine the nearest of the cluster? Treat clusteroid as it as if it were a centroid when you are calculating the cluster nearness. So, what is closest point? How do you represent a cluster of many points? So, possible meanings of closest is smallest maximum distance to other points, smallest average distance to other points, smallest sum of square distance to other points. So, you can ca calculate it in any way. So, this is a cluster of 3 data points. You can have a centroid or you can have a clusteroid or you can have a data point. So, centroid is the average of all data points in the cluster. This means centroid is an artificial point. It is not an actual point. Clusteroid is an existing data point that is closest to the all the other data points, closest as defined by any of the three methods given above. Now, defining nearness, how do you determine the nearness? One is intercluster distance, that is the minimum of the distance between any two points, one from each other. So, that is one way. Or you can pick a notion of cohesion of clusters, that is maximum distance from the clusteroid merge clusters whose union is most cohesive. So, that is another method of definition. Cohesion is the use the diameter of the merged cluster and the maximum distance between points in the cluster or you can use an average distance between the points in the cluster or you can use a density based approach. Depending on what method you want your cluster clustering to happen, you can define the methods. So, the example of an agglomerative uh, algorithm you have here A, B, C, D, E, F and all those points are represented by it is we are assuming uh, it is only two dimensions. So, x 1 and x 2 and these are the points this is the data matrix. So, now you calculate the Euclidean distance in this way Euclidean distance you remember square root of so you calculate it this way and then you have the distance matrix. So, that is the data matrix you have the distance matrix between a b c d e f and a b c d e f you know that a to a uh, the diagonal values will be 0. Now, you take the same example we want to merge the uh, clusters. So, what you have to do is you have to merge uh, D and F. So, D and F get merged and the new distance matrix will be as it is as given here. From that you have to again uh, take the matrix find the distance and then and then you do the update the distance and you get the new distance matrix. So, you continue doing that in the iteration 2 you will merge merge A and B. So, that is what you will merge. So, you will merge that and so you have A B 
D C D F and E as a new and then you continue doing that in the iteration 3 you will merge D F and uh, E. So, that will be the next one and um, after that in iteration 4 you will merge D F E and C. So, you will get this and uh, finally, you will merge everything together with the termination condition. So, this is the example that we have given and uh, this is a divisible again a top down strategy works in the similar way, but it subdivides it. So, the here we have to find the furthest distance you have to dis uh, termination condition. So, what is the summary of this module that we have done? We have discussed explained clustering and its applications, we have discussed hierarchical clustering along with different distance measures and we have explained agglomerate type of hierarchical clustering with an illustrative example. So, thank you.